Hi everyone, welcome to the CMC Markets. Today is the end of the day in the US, September 12th. And of course we know tomorrow is a big day with CPI, then PPI, then Fed meeting next week. By the way, I am Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com. So what we're going to talk about today is going to be uh, the cash indices, the metals. We're going to look a little bit at the energy space and really try to determine with the dollar what that all means in terms of next moves. There's lots of chatter coming from both sides of the fence. One of the things that I'm really keen on right now is the interest rates. What we're looking at right now, if we look at this NASDAQ chart, is one of my favorite short-term formations which is after this big move up in this consolidation, the last two days, starting with Friday of last week, Monday, yesterday, and now Tuesday today, two inside days. So in a candlestick world, that generally means pause, which of course makes a lot of sense. The traders are trying to figure out what the next moves are. Rule of thumb is that when you get that type of pause, what you want to do is you want to follow it from the high of the day before. So that would be two inside days. So the high from the day before is 15,586, 75 to be exact. So that's the number we're going to be looking at for uh, tomorrow, would be this 15,586. Now, the high today, of course, was much lower, and it's actually down on the day. But if we get through that, then I would anticipate our next moves would be up to around 15,900, maybe even get back up to 16,000 or higher. We do have two days of stats to get through, so I would anticipate the first number would be more realistic. Now, the flip side is true. If we actually break down under 15,157, which was the low, yesterday, then I would say more downside is in store. So what are we looking at? We've had some nice consolidation. We had a couple of closes here and then the lows of this day were just slightly at that level. So if we look at the low this day, the low this day was at 14,744. That would be probably my first area a target of support. Now, what would make the NASDAQ go down, of course, would be a hot CPI number because then it would be fears that the Fed would be more aggressive. But like I said, at this point, I'm actually thinking that that will not happen and instead we'll get some kind of a sense of a normalization, which would put the growth stacks and certainly the NASDAQ 100 back in view to the upside. So one reason why I'm actually kind of rooting for interest rates to stay where they are is because in the normalization of interest rates given current conditions, and of course anything can always upset the apple cart, the Dow Jones has really been, I think, impressive at these levels. The DIA, of course, is trading a little bit higher at around 3470, but right now what we have is a situation where only one inside day compared to the growth stocks that I just showed you with NASDAQ being two inside days. So we can still use the same theory, which means that the Dow over 34,969, let's call it 35,000, would actually be more of a buy. And the Dow underneath the low of yesterday, which is 34,317, would probably put more pressure. And you see all these little mini patterns within patterns. So yes, we are in a strong bull phase. We are well above the 50, well above the 200. We do have potential to see a little bit more work between 34 and 35 to determine if this is somewhat of a mini head and shoulders top, which would probably yield, if we look at the highs to the lows, about a $200 move lower. That would put us down to around 200 if that actually broke down. But if it doesn't break down and we can get back through that 35,000, that not only would negate the, the head and shoulders top potential, but it would also clear a lot of the resistance except for the few days right here, and also clear this high that we had uh, back in December of, believe it or not, 2022, and that's at 35,000, and I think that that would gear us up for the potential of more rally. So just to repeat, 35 really is the area, uh, you know, when we look clearly at the high from yesterday, it's 34,969. You can either look for that or round up to 35. 
and then on the flip side of course would be under that thirty four three and in between well i think it will resolve pretty quickly but what does also strike me is if you look at all these opens and closes over the last several really couple of weeks this thirty four six hundred if i had to pick a pivotal area let's call it thirty four thousand five ninety to thirty four thousand six twenty that's your pivot zone in between there you probably don't want to do much under you could have a negative bias above you can be slightly more positive positive. and let's move on to the s and p's so you can see there's an incredible similarity uh, to the nasdaq chart and this chart in that once again two inside days today not only an inside day but a real narrow range trading day so if you're confused and waiting well clearly we can see most investors are feeling the same way at this point however obviously the bias with a bullish phase is certainly much more to the upside so let's look at the numbers same thing here also potential head and shoulders top which would actually not break down unless we really clearly got under 4360 but assuming now that it holds any move above the high of yesterday which i'm looking uh, to the left here at 4531 should actually be more upside for the actual market and that same uh, level that we were looking at here although in this case it would be more what was made in march as opposed to the dow which was made in december but this high on this day was four thousand six hundred and thirty one so i would say we get through this four thousand five hundred and thirty one we could easily see a move up to four thousand six hundred and thirty one the high of this move so far has been just below that four thousand six hundred and thirty four that's on the upside to bring the numbers much closer to the downside 4434 which was yesterday's low we break down under that obviously we'll be looking at 4400 and then of course i think you have to start looking at some of the bigger support areas and i don't see the same cleanness as i saw in the dow chart in terms of opening closes but what we can say is 4300 to 350 is going to be the next major support before we start looking at 4200. I do believe that the rotation is going more into the Dow industrials, so I'd be keeping my eye on that, as well as keeping my eye on the small caps, which are already outperforming as of Tuesday session in the U.S. stock market. There are many, many bulls out there right now in the U.S. dollar, and this, by the way, is the index looking at the December contract. So your numbers are a little bit different depending on where you look. And when I talked to you last week, I said that I didn't think that the DXY was going to get, and that's the continuous contract, above 105.50. Maybe, maybe max it would get to is 106. Well, yeah, last week the spot contract did get to 105.50, and now you can see uh, if we're looking at the same instrument, it's about the same at 104.69, 104.70. Also, noteworthy, inside day. So we are in a bullish phase. It has returned to a bullish phase because it's over the 50-day moving average, albeit a downward sloping 50-day moving average. So it's a relatively weak bullish phase, but a bullish phase nonetheless. So the same kind of thing, especially if you're looking at dollar pairs. We saw the had that really nice correction last week, which gave you an opportunity after the video last week to sell the dollar by the yen. Uh, for like a day and that's about all we're talking about here is very short term so for tomorrow same kind of rule this inside day rule is really very useful for day traders so the high was 105.125 so let's call it 105.13 clearly if uh, there is some kind of a escape into the dollar or a flight to safety into the dollar that would clear and then we would be looking at the numbers here at about 106 just shy of it maybe 105.87 on the flip side of course if we break down under the low of yesterday which is 103.9 103.98 to be exact so let's call it 104 then i think not only does the dollar weaken and that might actually be good for growth stocks or not it's really hard to tell all these relationships are certainly not solid they're changing constantly but what I can tell you what it will be good for is what I'm going to show you next. 
so looking at goal this again is the december goal chart clearly it has had trouble remaining afloat but yet just like the uh, indices it's actually in a bullish phase if you're looking at december gold futures contract gld is a little bit different but nonetheless what we see right now is no inside day today in fact yesterday you had an inside day with a little bit of follow through to the downside and so we might see a, a test of that 1900 again is a lot's going to depend on what happens with that cpi number if it holds above that 1900 level then i'll be looking just slightly above that i like to look at these opening and closes especially when they line up with something like a high of the day so the high of today so far in gold was 1928 in this contract so if we hold 1900 we can get through 1928 to 1930 Again, I'm still thinking very bullish, particularly if the dollar goes down. Uh, clearly, we break down under that 1900. Uh, we could be seeing another test of that 50-day moving average at 1880 and possibly a move down to 1850. But what's really going to be even far more interesting to me is something you can base your futures trade on in the metals. But I'm going to show you an ETF chart, and that would be the gold miners. The reason why I'm showing you this chart, first of all, this is my stock charts. But secondly, there's a couple of things in here that you have not been able to see in the futures. So we have discussed things like leadership and real motion and momentum. But what you're seeing here are two horizontal lines. The first one being the six month calendar range high and the red one being the six month calendar range low. So essentially the rule of thumb is every six months the calendar range resets and when it does reset, it gives you a bias, whether it's trading above the high or below it. In this case, you can see the miners are below it. And they've been a very, very difficult market to trade because as soon as they look really bad, they go up. As soon as they look really great, they go down. So what we want to see, the typical historic relationship is that the miners lead. Well, we haven't seen that situation. So that's one of the reasons why these rallies in gold have been more based on fear than actual inflation or even seeing the industrial metals have some kind of a comeback. That's what I'm watching for. So after the numbers come out, and I wrote a whole daily on it, if we can get through these levels, let's just call it an even $29 in this GDX, then I think you could be taking a look at both the gold and the silver for more of a buy opportunity. And if, of course, we cannot get through that and we start to break down again under, let's say, 2830, then I think we'll see another visit to the lows. Of course, that would be negative for the gold. So hopefully that's helpful to you. This is uh, crude oil. Uh, it's been the highest it's been for quite some time. It's amazing how many people are starting to come out calling the top in this market. People love to be heroes. But I don't see anything at this point other than a little bit of resistance right up here at $90 a barrel uh, when you're talking about WTI. Brent's already through that that maybe it could have some resistance but some resistance could be a very shallow correction and clearly that's what we've been seeing in this particular chart so i'm really looking at this now now we've been long for a while i've made no secret of my bullish bias in oil for quite some time now really basically since june so we have to say at this point we have about 45 percent of the position left and remember, we had talked about a stop under 80. Now my stopping point would be really under $85 a brow. We break down under that, particularly on a closing basis. That might be force me out with some nice profit. However, if that doesn't happen, and we can even take it a little bit lower, we can say, well, you can go all the way down to around 83. That would be giving up another $2 a barrel. But I would say if we just bring it up a little bit more, more around 83.50, that would really also be a good point if you wanted to be a bit more patient and just see a normal correction. So tomorrow, again, if we get in under 87.30, which really corresponds with the opening of today and the close of yesterday, then I would probably say, yeah, we may see that 85. We may even see that 83.50. If we maintain above this level, then of course, we'll be looking at that 90 level and we get through 90. Then of course, our next area is going to be 92 up to about 93.50. So with natural gas, 
um, I think we're seeing a basing action, but it's not been proven yet. And today in the U.S. markets, the ETF natural gas, that actually rallied over 5%, close to 6%. But when you're talking about something so cheap, that doesn't necessarily mean very much. I do like the fact that we got some volume coming in. So you can see that we've had a couple of more than one accumulation of volume, accumulation meaning that the up day is followed by higher volume than the day before. So we have one day where it did that, second day where it did that, today being the third day. Generally, three days of accumulation of volume is a good sign. So let's talk about that. However, we've talked about two, really 179 uh, has been, to me, the major risk point we want to be looking at, and 280 really being the level that this has to clear. And you can see intraday, we passed through it here, was 286.5. This day was also about 286.3. This day was uh, $3 and uh, really basically one cent. Uh, look where the close was though that day. The close was at 277 under that 280. So I think what we really want to see right now is a close above 280. We see a close above 280. That would definitely give me more boldness on this call that we can at least, at least go up and see a test of that 50-day moving average at 340. And of course, if we cannot guess that close or even get above 280 and we start to break down one more time under, let's call it 247, 248, then perhaps we have to sit through a bit more doldrums here in the natural gasket. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.